On BBC Two now, Quentin Wilson sings the praises of the robin. You know, it's hard to know where to begin with the plastic pig. I suppose we could start by doing the obvious thing and having a jolly good laugh. Do you know, I found out the other day they actually make Reliant Robin three-wheelers brand new. Right, that's got that out the way, now we know what we're up against, the nation's favourite three-wheeled joke. But look here, if it is such a joke, how come Reliant used to be Britain's second biggest car maker, turning over in excess of £20 million a year? How come they've survived when scores of other much more glamorous names have simply gone to the wall? How come there's always been this evangelical band of Reliant fanciers who simply can't get enough of the things? You know, it's high time we got to grips with the Reliant phenomenon. The first surprise comes when you attempt to track the history of the plastic pig. Reliant's unofficial historian is 13-year-old Daniel Lockton. Well, I've always been interested in cars and mechanical things and the history of motoring. And um, I noticed that Reliant was the only British car company left which made actual affordable cars. And so I looked for books on it in libraries and bookshops, and I just found there weren't any. So I decided that I should write a book amassing the bits of information from other sources, like original Reliant documents. Reliant was founded in 1935 by Tom Lawrence Williams, who was working for the Rally Cycle Company in Nottingham, which at that time made cars as well as bicycles. They were producing a three-wheeled van called the Rally LDV, which Tom had designed. And then they made a car version of it called the Safety 7. Rally decided in 1934 that they were going to cease production of the, of the van and the car um, because it wasn't economic. And, but Tom decided that it had a market for the van as a light delivery vehicle. So he bought the rights to it off Rally. And because some of the parts had space for seven letters and some of the other parts had an R on them, he um, called it the Reliant. By 1953, Tom had got more daring and come up with something that actually looked like a car. The Regal cost 389 pounds and 12 shillings and was, according to the brochures, the ideal car for shopping and countryside touring. Flushed with success, Reliant launched the Regal Mark III in 57, and they now had a new slogan, relax in a Reliant. There was a time when things like this were both fiercely desirable and terribly practical. You see, they came about because of a licensing loophole. Anything that had three wheels and weighed less than 800 weight was classed as a motorbike and sidecar, and best of all, you didn't need a car license to drive one. So in 50s Britain, the Reliant three-wheeler 
was almost glamorous. The Regal 325 was introduced in 1962 and had the first mass-produced all-aluminium engine on a European car. I myself have one of these cars and um, mostly I've driven it in our field but I haven't really had a chance to test it on tarmac yet really. I'd like to do that one day so when I'm 17 I can drive it on the road. Clearly style never worried Reliant but they did know a bit about a new material called glass fibre. If you're wondering what ingredients go into a pig, here's the recipe. In the late 60s, business was booming and Reliant found friends all over the world. Cash rich and confident, they bought out their only three-wheeled rivals bond, shrewdly killing off the competition at a stroke. But they did at least keep the name and commissioned a designer to create their most extravagant tricycle yet, the Bond Bug. Because you could drive it with a motorcycle license, you could drive it at a younger age, and in fact the road tax was less as well, so it was economical. And it was certainly uh, uh, targeted at, at a market of, of young people who were enthusiastic and wanted something fun and, and a bit different. The launch was fantastic. It happened at uh, Woburn Abbey, a great success, a uh, lot of uh, press mileage and a lot of interest. But the, the 200 cars sold mm -hmm. and there was not enough follow-up and the summer was lost. I think another problem probably was that um, it was sold through the traditional Regal dealers and the guy who wanted a bond bug should have gone to a Ferrari dealer or somebody like that, you know, to sort of throw away a little car. So had it not been for that, uh, I think it would have had a lot more mileage and, and, and lived a lot, lot longer. But any car that looked like a demented wedge of Red Leicester was doomed to failure, and the bug lasted just four short years. In 1973, they phased it out and introduced their flagship vehicle, a car which the police, of all people, immediately dubbed the Plastic Pig, a name which was to haunt the company forever, and one which the public greedily seized upon as the ideal comic description for all Reliant three-wheelers. The car they launched was the Reliant Robin. While Reliant's ad men were busy wooing the in crowd, Tom Caron's new design thrust the pig into a new age. From a body point of view, it was ahead of trends, I would say, if one looked at it against other vehicles of the time. And one could disregard the fact that it was as only one wheel in front, which always uh, goes against it. Uh, we had a nice windscreen which you could wipe with a single wiper. Some very nice touches about the car, but of course it had to be done within the weight, so you had to make certain compromises. But I'm very proud of Robin. Now I'll be perfectly straight with you, I've only ever driven a Robin 300 yards, which was quite enough. I am therefore not best placed to speak with any authority. What I really need to do is to swallow my pride, my fear, my misgivings, and take one for a trot, so I will. Oh dear, that it should come to this. Over the years, quite a bit of urban folklore has grown up around three-wheelers. Some of it not terribly flattering. Popular belief number one. They're not safe. 
Well, the one that I had the misfortune of owning, uh, as the fireman was dousing it with his hose, he said, actually, they're not, uh, well, they're no more fire prone than any other car. So it said they were literally flames? Oh, yeah, yeah. Quite a few flames by the time they arrived. I got it back from a guy who was going to repair it, and I parked it up for about ten minutes. And I went inside, came out, turned the key, and there was this kind of wump sound, you know, like a gas oven lighting. And all these flames shot out, curled under the dashboard and set light to the wiring. Well, then, so it's true, they, they are unsafe. I think all things are relative. I mean, you know, it is perfectly possible to get flambéed reliant, but uh, the thing is that the engines are crammed into this little engine compartment, and whatever the devotees say about them, they are a little swine to work on. And also, a lot of people who own them, um, they're not flush, and so basic maintenance is quite often skimped. You'll have 150-year-old plug leads with sparks hammering around. All you need is a fuel leak, and it's a nice little hot box in there, so you turn the key and you get instant external combustion. Back in 73, the motoring press weren't as bothered by flames as another of the Reliant's charming idiosyncrasies. My main criticism of this car, as of every three-wheeler I've ever driven, is just one of stability. With three wheels, you just don't get the sort of stability you get with four. It's just mathematically impossible. And when you're bundling along at a fairly healthy sort of rate and you tip the car into a corner, you just wonder whether you're going to lift a wheel, which you can do quite easily, or even uh, worse than that, turn the whole lot over. Well, it is, it's jolly difficult to turn over, but uh, I would rather f feel myself that it was a, a, a bit more difficult than I think it possibly is. But things did turn over, like money, over 20 million pounds a year. The mid-70s were golden years. Reliant had zapped the competition and sold over 100,000 three-wheelers. So it was time for one with four. An extra wheel and the Robin became a kitten. They even took out an ad warning British Leyland to watch it, especially since they discovered a new and exciting commodity, style. The scimitar attracted a new breed of customer into the Reliant fold. Now the second biggest car company in Britain, they even had royal patronage and drove both a scimitar and a kitten. At peak, around about early 1970s, we had a group of four companies with seven factories, 3,700 employees, a turnover of around 25, 28 million, which in today's value is double that, getting them for 60 million. And we were producing 333 wheelers a week in those days. Perhaps the typical customer would be a peaked cap person, maybe a postman or a railway porter, somebody like that. A solid, steady citizen with a solid, steady income and a solid, steady job. And he wanted solid, steady motoring. Popular belief number two. They're all owned by sad old anoraks. My name's Kath, I'm from Bradford, and like me, this car is sexy, glamorous and cheap. Uh, these cars are not extremely sad, they are very happy, bouncy and extremely cool. I find most cars on the road very boring. They've all got four wheels. They're all red, white or blue. And I like to have a car that I can enjoy driving and be noticed in, because it's a little bit different. I have got a full car licence. I have had for some years. And uh, I still want to drive a three-wheeler, because I think they're great. Go, go, Reliant Robins! If further proof is needed that there's no such thing as a typical three-wheeler owner, try these two for size. Roy Harkness is six foot four and 17 stone and the official town crier for West Lancashire. He and his diminutive wife are on their eighth consecutive plastic pig. But even Roy would agree that the cost of a three-wheeler is nothing to shout about. They are pricey, there's no doubt about that, but having said that, they do hold a value. I mean, this one here now, we're probably talking about, ooh, £8,000 with all the bits and pieces that go with it. 
But uh, and you could probably say, well, look, there's a four-wheel car there. You can get for what six and a half, seven thousand quid. I have tried another car. It was on a test run, and that was a, a Volvo. But I was being filmed at the time, and it caused a little bit of embarrassment because it, I was filmed getting out of my reliable, reliant Robin, and then I was filmed getting into this Volvo, which I couldn't get into. Uh, I couldn't get my head underneath the roof. My, my knees were tight underneath the steering wheel. So, no, no good at all. There's no doubt about this being the best car on the road. And I'm very happy with it. But by the mid-80s, Reliant was anything but a happy place. The three-wheeler was so long past its sell-by date that it had begun to whiff, and the whole company was slowly going belly up. Outside, the run-down factory lay a collection of tragic relics, a reminder of better days. Investment had dried up, so had the customers, and the bank manager was round the corner with his engine running. The paint had long since peeled away, and it was only a matter of time before the inevitable happened. Since then, the three-wheeler's future has always rested on a knife edge. Perhaps Reliant's problem was that no one took it seriously anymore. Popular belief number three. They're no fun. How about driving a pig abroad to a football match? 5,000 miles in 15 days. Fun or just sad? The two concerned aren't sure, so they'd only agree to be filmed incognito. I'd probably admit that it started off as a bit of fun and really didn't expect possibly to get as far as Bill Bow. But after Bill Bow, I think confidence grew in the car and we just, we just decided to, um, well, it, it'd become almost an obsession to roll it up in front of famous places in Europe and take a couple of slides. This is outside St Mam's football stadium, Bill Bow. This is um, outside the Paul Ricard uh, circuit in the South of France where they have the, the French Grand Prix. Whilst we were there, we, um, we stumbled across the, I think it was qualification for some, um, for some big Porsche competition that they had over there. Uh -huh. And they were all lined up on the concourse waiting to go into the uh, scrutineer's shed. And uh, we just nosed into the line there. And uh, we weren't passed by the scrutineers. Something about not enough wheels or something. So went up for a day in San Moritz, um, just took it down the crest to run. Um, which one's ours? That's ours on the right, I think. <laughs> That's uh, the car park outside the Monte Carlo Casino. I mean, we often used to uh, leave the car park and come back to find people looking underneath it and all around it, looking for the extra wheel. You know, it's a very sort of um, common reaction over there. Well, it looks as if Newcastle's going to qualify for Europe again. Um, so, I mean, this time it's, it could be, could be Kiev or Panathinaikos. Tel Aviv. Nicosia. Who knows? Bigger and better things, anyway. So where does all this leave us, eh? Well, despite what some reliant devotees might say, the three-wheeler still has the image of a car for those who have no other choice, and it's always going to struggle. And let's face it, hand-building plastic cars in a Dickensian factory in Tamworth might be quaint, but it's never going to make much commercial sense. But then, in a way, I suppose the three-wheeler is a success story in its own right. For it to have made it into the 70s, let alone the 90s, is a miracle on the scale of, of loaves and fishes. I mean, here we are, in an era of awesome technical sophistication, moments from the microchip millennium, and the pig is still with us. It could only happen in Britain, and I say, good luck to them. This is a little poem I've written about the Reliant car, and it's called Relying on Reliant. Changed in the fifties from bike to Reliant. Great little car, performs like a giant. Cheap on the tax, economical on fuel. Won't break the bank when it's time for renewal. To help the environment and cause less pollution, Reliant's small engine could be the solution. Those snub drivers jeer, will find I'm defiant. I'll keep travelling on in my three-wheeled Reliant. <laughs> From the economical to the sublime, the latest Porsche in Top Gear, Thursday at 8.30 on BBC Two.